Hi and welcome to Export Kit. In this example, I'm glad to demonstrate the fastest way that you can create a responsive prototype website. And in future videos, I'll show you how to also turn this into an app. So be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for new and updated videos. And let's go. Now, the first thing we want to do is because we have our beautiful design that was taken from a free online uh, file, food delivery app UI kit. Shout out to whoever made it. We called it index. Let's not call it index. Let's call it welcome. Now, all we have to do is simply extract in the same location. So extract here. We'll take a look. Let's go to welcome first. Okay. Now you'll see that everything is static. We can't really click any of the content. I believe the next one was login and uh, what would be the next one home so you can see it it quickly created the content that we had within our figma design now this is just a static website so the next step would be to make this somewhat interactive that we can at least click through the content so let's do that quickly with prototypes so we're just gonna switch over to prototypes in our in our selection and let's just go ahead now what's important is that when you're using prototypes you want to make sure that you're prototyping both the text and the background uh, do not prototype the folder you should actually prototype each object so we're just gonna have this click through just so we can uh, go ahead and test a few different things so let's go and let's bring it to here let's assume the image is gonna bring us over and you know what let's do the details okay so now we have a bit of interaction as to where each click event should go so let's go ahead and export and let's go back let's check our welcome now you see that we can click the content it will navigate to the desired section oh, we have an image missing so we're gonna have to figure out why this image is missing let's go ahead and let's correct this really quickly so if we look this is inside of a mass group and which is the main issue and these are some tips and tricks no matter what you're doing in the plugin what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a square I'm gonna draw a square over it make sure it's within this group just above the element take the square let's go back to the design the fill let's make the fill opacity zero and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this image hit area so this is typically what you should do with a lot of stuff like technically we could have made this hit area the entire object so rather than adding individual uh, prototypes to you know the text the background etc we could have just added it to the entire hit area so let's actually just do that let's make the hit area the entire object and there we go so let's go back to the prototype and let's remove the prototype that's on the image and we can now actually remove the prototype on the text and on the background let's just get that one going there we go so now we only have a prototype on the hit area so let's re-export test again and you can see we have the image but we also have our hit area and it goes to our details so it's much better to manage a hit area than to actually place prototypes on individual elements so this is just a little tip and a trick so you'll see now we already created a, a fair bit of navigation and you can go further to navigate to all the elements 
So the next step likely once we have our navigation, let's pretend we have all our navigation done. Uh, we could add interactivity. We have videos as to how we can turn this into an actual form rather than static content. Uh, we have uh, videos as to how you can turn your elements into animated objects uh, far beyond what you can do with the prototyping whether you're using Figma XD Photoshop etc uh, you can actually use raw native JavaScript and CSS animations so the next step we're gonna do once we've completed this and we have a couple prototypes let's turn this into a responsive design so we're just gonna go to tools and go to responsive screens uh, we're gonna select web if it's not already selected and let's go ahead and generate our screens you'll see that it created the screens for basically each of our target sizes so let's go ahead and export once it's complete we're just gonna repeat the process so let's go ahead let's check our welcome so you can see already the size of welcome has changed based on the size of our screen content was shifting now you'll note login uh, the reason why it's a little bit different than what's in the design is likely because the layer name has the same uh, name as another element this is very important when using responsive sizes so this is an issue that will happen where with responsive if you have the same layer name it's likely that something else will give it a different size dimension uh, styles etc so it's very important that you have unique layer names uh, as well as you can see here it's likely that it has the same layer name as the button name now uh, when we were exported it by default this was different it was generating names differently but with responsive it has to keep tabs onto what the layer names are. You can see again here, these are names that have been used uh, in other segments, profile orders. So this is something that would have to be modified within the design. So that way what it can do is it will actually generate a unique element, which is very important. So I'm glad that this error was able to show itself. We're just gonna fix a couple of these really quickly just to show how, what the difference will be once it is modified okay so you can see there quickly we made a responsive page let's just fix our errors really quick so let's go back uh, and let's go to the design now this element here is called login so let's call it login text we have login here let's call it login button now remember what I said was that it's very important that you do not have the same layer name and also the frame itself is called login so you want to have unique names as much as possible btn text uh, let's call this profile menu label orders menu label okay so we made a couple quick adjustments now of course there might be more errors you should really check your assistant to see how many errors there are but we're just showing this quickly how you can create your own responsive website with very little effort so we've generated our screens again let's export once more and extract in the same location and replace and let's take a look at our home page again now we still have all the responsive features that we had before so that's not an issue let's just make sure so we see login is now in the correct location this is because we have a unique layer name also for the bottom and also these are unique layer names so you'll see quickly and easily you can fix your errors simply by renaming your layer but hey create your own responsive prototype for an HTML website in a couple of minutes, not hours, not days, not weeks.